Deputy Duo 6 Honus Wagner Baseball Card depicts the Pittsburgh Pirates, Honus Wagner, a dead ball air baseball player who is widely considered to be one of the best players of all time. The card was designed and issued by the American Tobacco Company ATC, from 1909 to 1911 as part of its T206 series. Wagner refused to allow production of his baseball card to continue, either because he did not want children to buy cigarette packs to get his card, or because he wanted more compensation from the ATC. The ATC ended production of the Wagner card and a total of only 50 to 200 cards were ever distributed to the public exact number in none, as compared to the tens or hundreds of thousands of T206 cards over three years in 16 brands of cigarettes for any other player. In 1933, the card was first listed at a price value of $50 in Jefferson Burdick's The American Card Catalog equivalent to $1,000 in 2019, making it the most expensive baseball card in the world at the time. The most famous T206 Honus Wagner is the Gretzky T206 Honus Wagner card. The card's odd texture and shape led to speculation that it was altered. The Gretzky D206 Wagner was first sold by Alan Ray to a baseball memorabilia collector named Bill Mestro, who sold the card two years later to Jim Copeland for nearly four times the price he had originally paid. Copeland's sizable transaction revitalized interest in the sports memorabilia collection market. In 1991, Copeland sold the card to ice hockey figures Wayne Gretzky and Bruce McNall for $451,000. Gretzky resold the card four years later to Walmart and Treat Entertainment for $500,000 for use as the top prize in a promotional contest. The next year, a Florida postal worker won the card and auctioned it at Christie's for $640,000 to collector Michael Didwitz. In 2000, the card was sold via Robert Edward Auctions to card collector Brian Seidel for $1.27 million. In February 2007, Seidel sold the card privately to an anonymous collector for $2.35 million. Less than six months later, the card was sold to another anonymous collector for $2.8 million. In April 2011, that anonymous purchaser was revealed to be Ken Kendrick, owner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. A different card, named the Jumbo Wagner, was sold at auction again in 2016 for a record $3.12 million. These transactions have made the Wagner card the most valuable baseball card in history. However, this record was recently broken when a Mike Trout 2009 Bowman Chrome Draft Prospector Super Fractor Series rookie card with a card count of one recently sold for a record setting $3.93 million, making Wagner the second most valuable baseball card in the world. In October 2013, Bill Mastro, CEO of Mastro Auctions, the owner of Robert Edward Auctions, pleaded guilty to mail fraud in U.S. District Court and later admitted to the court that he had trimmed the Gretzky Wagner card to sharply increase its value. Other T206 Wagners, both legitimate and fake, have surfaced in recent years. Some of the real cards have fetched hundreds of thousands of dollars in auctions. One particular T206 Honus Wagner owned by John Cobb and Ray Edwards has attracted media controversy over its authenticity. The American Tobacco Company was formed as a result of an 1889 merger of five major cigarette manufacturers. W. Duke Ampersand Sons Ampersand Company, Allen Ampersand Ginter, Goodwin Ampersand Company, F. S. Kinney Company and William S. Kimball Ampersand Company. Because the company came to monopolize the tobacco industry, ATC did not have to conduct advertising or promotions for its products. Since baseball cards were primarily used as a sales promotion, ATC removed them from its tobacco packs, almost driving the cards into obsolescence. During the presidency of Trust Buster, Theodore Roosevelt, the ATC was subjected to legal action from the government, in hopes of shutting down the monopoly in the industry. Thereafter, the ATC was back in competition with other tobacco companies, so it reinserted baseball cards into cigarette packs. In 1909, the company introduced the T206 series also known as the White Border set of baseball cards of 524 players into its cigarette packs. The cards were printed at seven factories in New York, North Carolina, Ohio and Virginia. Two years later, the ATC was broken up into several major companies as part of the United States Supreme Court ruling in United States v. 
American Tobacco Company, 221 U.S. 1061911. The typical card in the T206 series had a width of 1716 inches 3.65 cm and a height of 258 inches 6.67 cm. Some cards were awkwardly shaped or irregularly sized, which prompted a belief that many of the cards in the series had been altered at one point or another. In his work inside T206, a collector guide to the classic baseball card set, Scott A. Reader wrote that it is not at all uncommon to find T206 examples that have been altered at some point during their near century of existence. These discrepancies were taken advantage of by car doctors, who trim corners and dirty edges to improve the appearance of the card. The front of all T206 series cards, including the Wagner card, displayed a lithograph of the player created by a multi-stage printing process in which a number of colors were printed on top of each other to create a lithograph with the appropriate design. The backs of the cards featured the monochromatic colors of the 16 tobacco brands for which the cards were printed. The Wagner cards in particular advertised the Piedmont and Sweet Copper brands of cigarettes and were produced at Factory 25 in Virginia, as indicated by the factory stamp imprinted on the back of the cards. Starting from January 1909, the ATC sought authorization from baseball players for inclusion in the T206 series, which would feature 524 major league players, 76 of whom would later be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Wagner had been at the top of his game throughout the decade, and was even considered to be the game's greatest player at the time. He had appeared on advertisements for a number of other products such as chewing gum, gunpowder and soft drinks. Unsurprisingly, the ATC asked for Wagner's permission to have his picture on a baseball card. According to an October 12, 1912 issue of the Sporting News, Wagner did not give his consent to appear on the baseball card. In response to the authorization request letter sent by John Gruber, a Pittsburgh sports writer hired by the ATC to seek Wagner's permission, Wagner wrote that he did not care to have his picture in a package of cigarettes. He threatened to seek legal action against ATC if they went ahead and distributed his baseball card. The reasons for Wagner's strong negative reaction to the ATC's request have been the subject of much speculation. The most commonly told account is that Wagner rejected the deal because he did not want young baseball fans to purchase the tobacco packs for his baseball card. Wagner held his fans in high regard, particularly the younger ones. His granddaughter, Blair, remarked that he loved children. He wanted to teach kids good sportsmanship. When it came time for that card to come out, it wasn't that he wasn't paid. He didn't want kids to have to buy tobacco to get his card. However, Wagner chewed tobacco, and he had previously appeared in advertisements for many tobacco products, including a cigar baseball trading card in 1899 and a newspaper ad for Murad cigarettes during the 1909 World Series. Another explanation surmised is that Wagner did not consent because he felt he was not receiving just compensation from the ATC for his baseball card when he Wagner had a history of being a tough negotiator, he had announced his retirement from baseball in December 1907, but returned shortly before the start of the 1908 baseball season after receiving a $10,000 contract, double his salary from the 1907 season. This theory has its flaws, however, since Wagner sent Gruber a check for $10 to compensate him for the fee ATC would have paid him if Wagner had given permission to create his baseball card. Michael O'Keefe and Terry Thompson, authors of The Card, Collectors, Con Men, and the True Story of History's Most Desired Baseball Card, asked why Wagner would compensate Gruber for $10, a substantial amount of money at the time approximately equal to $275 in 2016, if he refused authorization for monetary reasons. The ATC had already produced a number of T206 Honus Wagner baseball cards, the exact number is unknown, but is speculated to be between 50 and 200. They stopped production of the card, however, after Wagner denied authorization. In 1991, National Hockey League player Wayne Gretzky purchased an condition 1909 T206 Honus Wagner baseball card with a Piedmont cigarette brand back at a soccer bazaar.